We find Alex, Sam, and Marshall talking over breakfast on the USS S. Kennedy. Alex said, I know we have flown all over this solar system many times, but how do you feel about the big move of 1,400 light years from Earth to Kepler? That is one big ass move. Marshall responded, I know what you mean, it's like cutting the umbilical cord and detracting from Mother Earth. Sam said, you're right, but home is where your heart is. All our families are taking this journey with us. I have my best friends on Earth who will soon be on Kepler with me. I love my job, and there is no one better than me who will give their life to save humanity. Wow, said Alex. Here is a toast to our brother Sam, spoken so well. The three men held up their glasses of orange juice and said, Here to our Uncle Sam, and they all burst into laughter. The three officers leave the dining room and head toward the gym to dip in the Olympic-sized swimming pool. While walking and talking, Alex's eyes drift toward a young female officer walking in the opposite direction. Alex slows his walk, making eye contact with the young lady she pretty much turns his head. Before she gets on the elevator, she looks back at him, smiling with a big grin. She boarded the elevator. Alex looked at Sam and Marshall and asked who she was. Sam and Marshall smile at Alex and say, you poor little boy. How long have you been single, Alex? Alex said it's been a while, but who is she? Marshall noted that it was Lieutenant Regina or something like that. Alex smiled. So what does she do here? Sam said she works in the research department dealing with monkeys like you. They laugh and walk into the gym. The following week. Alex was walking out of the Black Squadron conference room. He saw the young woman again walking toward him. He stopped and paused, waiting for her to come closer. Alex, excuse me, Lieutenant, she kept walking. He walked faster to catch up with her, he said, repeated Lieutenant. Once he caught up with her, she turned around and looked at him. He said, Lieutenant, excuse me, but wasn't you a Lieutenant last week? Alex said, congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. She responded to Alex, well, I see you do pay attention to details. I like that. He raised his hand to salute her, and she said no. They then shook hands. She said, I'm Regina. He replied, I am Alex. She said, so you are a pilot, I see. Alex said, yes, I am, but I am new here. I have only been on board for a couple of months. Regina replies, that's why I've never seen you. Regina asked if they could talk later. I'm heading to a meeting. Alex said, sure, and they started to part ways. Alex stopped and yelled, Regina, what is your last name? She yelled back, Lance. Alex turned around with a huge smile on his face. Later that night, Alex and Regina had their first long conversation and fell asleep overnight on the comms. The following day, we find Regina and Alex having breakfast together in the dining room in a cozy little spot, talking and laughing. Later, Sam and Marshall walked into the dining room and saw Alex and Regina sitting alone in a cozy corner. So Sam and Marshall walked over and spoke. They both spoke to Alex and Regina. Good morning, Regina, and Alex spoke back. Alex introduced Regina to Sam and Marshall. Marshall said to Alex, well, I guess Sam was right. Regina really does research on little monkeys, after all. Sam and Marshall laughed out loud. Regina said, huh? Alex said, never mind them. They hadn't had their happy meal this morning. Sam and Marshall congratulated Regina on her promotion. Regina told them, thank you. Sam and Marshall said, well, we will let you two get back to doing whatever you were doing. They smiled and walked away. Regina said, so those are your friends. Alex said, yes, for the past 10 years, we go way back during high school. Later, Regina and Alex ended their breakfast and agreed to meet later. T minus 13 days, nine hours, 10 minutes and 44 seconds. Aboard the Apollo one, headquarters of the high command, Master Fleet Admiral Administration Office. Master Fleet Admiral Bishop Serbos, call sign Big Boss, is having his meeting with Chief Admiral Jake Tillis, call sign the Godfather. Bishop, so Jake, how are we looking? We are looking good, Jake replied. What level of flight speed are we talking about? Jake replied, one light year. Bishop asked, what do you think about that speed? Well, to be honest, Jake said, 
I'd rather we go at the speed of two light years. Jake explained, based on the timing of Apollo 2 coming, the terraforming will not be completed, Jake said, I would rather have the Apollo 1 civilians moving down to Kepler before a 2 gets here. I spoke to the chief of the 6th fleet and agreed to bring the Apollo 2 in at one light year speed, so they will be slowing down and arriving eight months after we go. At a two light year speed, we will be in orbit around Kepler in a three week time. Bishop replied, We do think alike. Jake smiled, We always have. Bishop asked Jake to send him a timeline for takeoff to landing, appreciating the strategic foresight and responsibility of Jake's decision. Jake said that once we are in the orbit of Kepler, we will release the planetary satellites and probes in orbit that will cover the solar system. Cruisers and fighters will also scan and recon all other planets in the system. Once we have an all clear, the terraforming on the planet starts and the terraforming from space will begin its terraforming. That will amaze the civilians to watch. All the other chiefs will be informed when their departments and the protocols can go into action. We will continue to cover the surface of Kepler in case of any issues with air power. Long term, once Apollo 1 has unloaded its civilians, the Apollo 1 will be transformed into battle mode and reconstructed. The first ten Apollos will be reconstructed into a battle station. This should take two years to complete all ten Apollos. We have 10,000 construction robots and all terraforming equipment, as well as parts for the terraforming and construction robots, Apollo 1 has 10,000 robots, and Apollo 2 will have more space to carry an additional 30,000 construction robots. So we will have more than enough. Bishop said, Great. I love you on my team. Jake, we have been together for 30 years now. Bishop, it's been that long? Jake said, If not more. Bishop said, So do you think we are going to run into any trouble? Jake replied, We will see, and if we do, I believe we have the best forces to handle anything. They would have to be gods to beat us. Jake said, We come in peace, but we will defend humanity. Bishop replied, Damn right. The two commanders ended their meeting. On board the USS Kennedy, the officers are having a PT day, a tradition where military officers and enlisted personnel engage in physical training. An announcement was made over the USS Kennedy's intercom system, reminding officers of the PT schedule for the day. The schedule is as follows Black Squadron at 11, Red Squadron at 13, Green Squadron at 14, Blue Squadron at 15, Navy Special Ops at 16, Kennedy Admins at 17, and Special Ops Ground at 18. The announcement also included tomorrow's PT schedules. Sam asked Marshall where Alex, the muscle head, was Marshall said, I have no clue. Sam, it's 10.30. Sam said more likely to do a kissy face with Regina, and they both laughed. Marshall said, I don't think they kissed yet. Alex walked in at that point. Alex is six feet two inches tall, a little shorter than his father, who is the big boss. However, at 250 pounds, Alex is just as handsome. He usually performs well in physical training events. During the event, Regina shows up as a spectator. Sam yells, Alex, I see your girl showed up to watch you fall on your face with those little tight shorts on Alex starts laughing. The fact is, Alex is a great athlete, and he did well, passing all of the PT requirements. Alex and Regina met for lunch, and during their meal, Regina asked Alex about his feelings for her. Alex paused to finish chewing and swallowing before responding. He asked if she really wanted to know his feelings after such a short time, to which Regina agreed that it was not fair to ask. However, Alex said he was happy to answer her and looked directly into her eyes. He admitted that this was the happiest time of his life. Alex said when he thinks about her, he gets so excited knowing she is a part of his life. Regina said, I love you and I want you to know I have the same feeling. Then she asked if we should meet each other's families and Alex agreed, saying that it would be a great idea. They both laughed and set a date. They agreed the following weekend. Their mutual understanding and respect for each other were evident in their decision to meet each other's families. Alex and Regina took a military transport bus to the Apollo 1. 
they met with her family, and they were very impressed with Alex. The Blackhawk Regina's dad also used to be a pilot, so he was fine going by their call sign. A couple of hours later, Alex and Regina left for Alex's parents' home. They rang the door comms. Sandra and Sharon opened the door with big smiles and thanked Regina and Alex for coming. They went into the family room and continued talking about 30 minutes later. Nancy walked in and informed everyone that lunch was being served in the dining room. So everyone moved into the dining room, took their seats, and started talking again. Regina was feeling very happy and relaxed. Soon, they heard the front door opening and footsteps approaching towards the dining room. Slowly, the dining room opened Big Boss walked in, and Regina's eyes widened in surprise. Big Boss said, Regina? Sandra replied, Hello, honey. This is Alex's friend, Regina Alex said. Do you know each other? Regina turned to Alex and said, Why didn't you tell me your last name? Mr. Blackhawk, everyone laughed. Big Boss explained that Regina works in the Apollo Research Center. Regina asked Alex, So when did you plan to tell me your last name, Alex? Alex replied, Well, it wasn't really that important. Sandra asked, How long have you two been dating, Alex said. Almost three weeks, Sandra told Regina that if it was anything special to her, she was the first lady Alex ever brought home to meet them. Regina smiled and held Alex's hand. I have never taken anyone to meet my parents either said Regina. Big Boss said, I have known Alex all his life and Regina for the past three years, and I am very impressed with you both. Big Boss told Regina he did not want to discuss work during lunch, but he had a question. He asked her how was the advanced translators were working out. Regina replied that they were doing great. Big Boss then informed Regina that he planned to meet with her and the chief next week. Regina agreed and said it would be great. After finishing their meal, Sharon asked Regina if she wanted to see the pool. Regina accepted, and they both headed over to the pool. Sandra looked at Alex Dam, home run Alex. Big Boss added she is a genius. She has an IQ off the charts. We just promoted her. Alex said I saw. Big Boss said, I have to agree with your mom, home run. She is a keeper, my son. She is all class. I never thought of ever fixing two people up on dates, but she and you never crossed my mind, and it was right under my nose. I guess faith will always find a way. Big Boss said to Alex, so you be the first to know. Alex said no what? Big Boss said that in three days, all Apollo personnel would have to report back on the Apollo to prepare for departure. Then Big Boss said you want the good news, Alex said. What's the good news, Dad? Big Boss said, Instead of a two-month journey, your godfather Jake recommended we travel at a two-light-year speed, and we will be at Kepler in three weeks. Alex shouted, yes, we will be very busy once we get there, said Big Boss. Sandra asked Alex, how do you feel about Regina? Alex said, I feel like I never felt before. Sandra said, yeah, that's what your dad told his dad. Big Boss said, and that is what I still tell him to this day. They all went out and sat around the pool. After a day out, Alex and Regina headed back to the USS S. Kennedy. Alex asked Regina how she felt about the day, and she responded by kissing him. As she looked into his eyes, she said, I love you, Lieutenant Alex Serbos. Alex returned the sentiment by saying, I love you too, Regina Lance. With that, their night came to an end. T minus four days. 5 hours, 19 minutes, and 30 seconds, Admiral Serbos and Admiral Tillis. The two men met in Big Boss' office. Big Boss, welcome, Jake. What do we have? Jake said, well, some big changes, but you decide how we are going to process this. The Apollo 2 can cut its time from 8 to 6 months after it's completed. They have the option to warp light years to Kepler or use the classified jump to Apollo 1. Big Boss asked what the pros and cons were. Jake said, well, there are very few cons about it. The big pros are we can get 30,000 extra construction robots and additional military robots. I think it's better to jump them to Kepler. Plus, the military will double in size and population as well, which we can more than handle. I spoke with research, and they will be more than ready to complete the Kepler surface shields. 
The shields are reverse tech. Any attack on the shields will cause the shields to absorb the energy or bounce off. For research and the military have completed the DEFCON robots. Big Boss, I never liked that name at all, Jake continued. Not all battle robots are grounds-based some can fly. Big Boss, what are our ground attack forces? Jake smiles well, you know we can cloak all ships well, research is close to developing drop pods for all ground forces. We will have the ability to drop our ground forces pretty much undetected. Research is hard at making cloaking uniforms. Big boss, we need to make sure we keep that out of civilians' hands we thought of that. Two, Jake said all of those are still in development but close to being completed. Big boss, I will announce today that all the personnel are to return to the Apollo in preparation to Kepler. I will give the 24-hour notice in about two hours. Jake, that's a good idea. Big Boss said the military would have 48 hours to say their goodbyes and report back on their ship. Big Boss asked Jake, how are you and Laura? Are you all good to go? Jake replied, we are set to go. How is Max? Jake said his unit is 110% and special ground ops are ready when needed. I spoke with General Case earlier. Big Boss said that's good to hear. Max is Jake's son, a major in the Marine Corps, Special Ops Ground Force. Great work, Jake. Jake stood up, gave Big Boss a salute, and exited the office. Two hours later, Big Boss broadcasted his fleet-wide announcement to all military personnel.